My name is Kevin Kreider, and I have a confession to make. I'm not Irish or German. I'm a Korean American adoptee, and I'm horrible with math. And growing up, I wanted to be white. Yeah, that's right. I wanted to be white because stereotypes are powerful. It led me to isolation, depression, feeling of alone, self-hatred. Stereotypes. I was asked to be part of this documentary on Asian men and what it was like to be a fitness coach and a model growing up in a white community. And first of all, it was two Asian women who asked me, and I was shocked because Asian women, they didn't want to hear about being stripped away of your sexuality or the stereotypes that came with an Asian male in America. So why now? I was hesitant, but then I shared my story. I came from a loving, adoptive family, but I soon found out the outside world is not as loving. My first memory of remembering that I wasn't white was being in kindergarten. And there's this Italian kid going around going, ching chang chong cha cha cha, you're Chinese, you're Chinese, laughing, going around single handedly pointing me out. Immediately I was shocked into reality, I am not like you. And that kept going on. Anybody know who Bruce Lee is? What's the first thing you think of? It's the first thing. Bruce Lee was used to shame me when I was growing up. Kids would take me in the schoolyard, bully me. What's up, Bruce Lee? You don't know karate? No. Beaten up in the schoolyard, mocked, told I was making native noises. I was really quiet growing up. I don't know where they got that from. Then fast forward to asking girls out on dates. This part's fun. Sixth grade, I ask a girl out to a dance, and she says, hmm, I'm not into Asian guys. Okay, let me walk that one off. Well, maybe white people just date white people, right? Then I figured, let me ask an Asian girl out. Maybe she'll say yes. Hey, you want to go to this dance with me? Sorry, I don't find Asian guys attractive. <laughs> wow, okay. I remember when that first happened, I said to myself, why is it that Asian guys aren't seen attractive? Why am I clumped into this group of people that are seen as effeminate, stereotypical and math and science and skinny and weak and quiet. And when this happened repeatedly, it became ingrained in me. All of a sudden, I started to believe the perceptions that people had of me. It's called conditioning. I was conditioned to believe this. And then I got mad. I got angry at these Asian women because I was so hurt, but I didn't know how to express myself. So what do I do? I strip away everything that I could of any Asian identity. Asian men were seen as skinny and weak. Guess what? I'm going to hit the gym, lift, get stronger. And guess what? That worked. Girls started to say, hey, man, I didn't know they made Asian guys like you. <laughs> guys stopped calling me chink and China man. They didn't do this anymore. I started to become part of something. But then I would tell Asian girls, I'm not really attracted to you. Pfft. Who are you? Dated only white girls for a while. Made me feel good because I felt like 
an inferior race my whole life. And when I could date a white girl, it made me feel like I was part of them. But then there was this constant tug of war. Don't quite fit here. Don't quite fit here. I'm not part of the white community, but I'm also not part of this community either. And I started to do something that I hated, which is I then became that bully. I started to look down on Asian guys, pick on them. Why aren't you fill in the blank? I started to really hate the person I was becoming, but guess what? That's what everybody else was doing. Let's just get in on all the fun, right? It's just a joke. It wasn't funny to me, but that's what I did to assimilate, to blend in. Every time I would try to share the, these feelings that I had of resentment and being the, the stereotypical Asian guy, people would tell me it's like, well, at least you don't have the black stereotypes. And I'm like, that's supposed to make me feel better? It's called marginalizing. Just because it's not as bad as this, you have no reason to talk. We are the model minorities. We are the best of the minorities. That's what we were told. We have nothing to complain about. So I shut down. I stopped talking about it. Maybe there is something wrong. But then things started to change. I saw my first, I guess you can call it a man crush, but he was an Asian guy who was signed by Ford Models. And he was a tall, handsome guy. And he was going to make it. And I was like, wow. Finally, a sex symbol. If he can inspire me to feel good about the way I look and my identity, maybe I can do the same. So I go up to New York. I start this modeling career. Modeling has its own barriers. While other people are going out, I'm sitting home alone. Castings aren't right for me. I can go way too many details over this. But something that happens to me, I get very very consumed with a lot of self-hatred. Oh, it's exhausting hating yourself, let me tell you. Drugs and alcohol, that's part of my story, covered up the pain that I was feeling. Because when I was drinking, I was part of you guys. Especially St. Patty's Day. Oh yes, I'm Kevin. I'm one of you. Looks ridiculous, by the way. I don't recommend it. But that's what happened. I started to hate myself. Stress starts to really hit at me. Depression, isolation, dating the wrong girls for the wrong reasons. And then it hits me. It's called alopecia areata. It's an autoimmune disease, stress-induced hair loss. It's not a good look for a model, especially for an Asian guy. I was now the Buddha and Professor Xavier. Talk about not feeling attractive and then losing that making you feel even less attractive. I would say that was my rock bottom of my life. And what I did was, I decided to do this crazy journey, soul searching. Picked up a skateboard. By the way, I didn't know how to skateboard at this time. But I'm gonna skateboard across the country. Some people said, that's far as gumping. It's a great movie watch with my mom all the time. Maybe that's where I got the idea from, but I figured if I can survive this journey, then I'll get the confidence, the self-esteem that maybe I was looking for. I can overcome everything. Or I'll die. Either one was a good option for me. But guess what? The third option happened, which was I lived, and I didn't get that fulfillment I wanted. There was this burning hole in me that felt empty. Felt like nobody understood me. I had to change my action because I was hating the person I was becoming. I had to change my action so I could change my trajectory of who I was and who I was becoming. And I'm sharing with you three things that I did that changed my life. The first was to create a safe space and environment for Asian men to talk about this. We've been marginalized. We've been told to shut it for a long time, by my parents too, even, at times. 
I remember I was being called a banana growing up. Yellow on the inside, white on the outside. I took a lot of pride in that, actually. I was like, yes, I'm a banana. Then I watched this movie, Breakfast and Tiffany's. Anybody hear of that? Old American classic, good old Mickey Rorick. Thought I could handle this one because I'm like, I'm a Twinkie, you know, I'm yellow, but I'm not really one of them. Then I saw his portrayal of Asian men, and immediately I felt shamed. I was not happy with what I saw, and I felt horrible about myself. And I realized that people's perceptions of Asian men come from things like this, the way we treat each other, and I let it happen. But then people tell you, don't take it so seriously, Kevin. But I didn't get the joke. And I I really thought I would. Then I go to a basketball game. And I meet this guy named Jeremy Lin. Lin Sanity. What a guy. He's like, Jeremy, 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 I got a question. Did you ever come across that stereotype that Asian guys aren't attractive? Little awkward laughs. He, he, he. I think they were expecting me to like ask him how he like dribbles and does all that stuff. And he's like, yeah. And he shared a little bit. He said that Asian women, yes, are over-sexualized. Asian men, we don't get the chance to talk about it. And he said we need to be able to speak about it and not feel shamed about it. And also, too, not to point fingers either. Not to be resentful or blame other people as well. Take responsibility for ourselves. So I started doing that. I started to create these communities. I joined the American Adoption Association. I started to date Asian girls. And guess what? My life changed. I started to feel like a part of something instead of separate. The next thing I did, I know this is going to sound hokey, but I had to forgive myself. I had to forgive the person I was becoming, the bully that I hated. And I learned through this documentary, through academia, that this experience that I have, these feelings are absolutely normal. This is what happens with stereotypes. This is what happens to people growing up who don't feel confident about their self-identity, their self-worth, their self-image. They feel inferior. This is what happens. And I said to myself, if I'm not alone, why don't more people know about this? And why aren't more people coming out like this? And I had to forgive myself because I didn't know. I just thought I was doing the best thing I could to just blend in, just get by. And then the Asian women, I go back to that, but they were the ones who hurt me the most. And I realized that they too were just going through the same stuff I was and they were doing the best that they could. And when I realized that, I was able to forgive them. And then the final action was to give it back, to mentor people, to mentor other Asian men, To say, you are not alone in this. That I felt the same way. That we don't have to go through this together. But that we can redefine what being an Asian male is for us. Not let movies, media, and other people, the way they treat us, the perceptions. We we don't have to let that define who we are and our value that we can bring to society. If there's anything, anything I got from this and anything I want you to take from this, is that I actually didn't want to be white. I just wanted to be treated like I was white. And I imagine a world where Asian men can give wholeheartedly, be vulnerable, share, love, receive love, be limitless in what they do to their communities and for their communities, not because of a stereotype, And I also imagine a world where Asian men can be cool, be seen as cool, sexy, fun, just like any other race. I'm Kevin Kreider, and that's my story. Thank you.